Hi everyone, it's Brenda with Happy Healthy Homemade and today we're making my gluten-free turkey and shrimp dumplings. I have not had a gluten-free dumpling like this before. Some of the things I've tried to capture in this recipe are the pillowiness of the dough, the toothiness of it so that the wrapper does not slip off the filling when you eat it, and the texture of the wrapper, which is a very important piece of the Chinese eating experience. These dumplings remind me of Chinese New Year growing up. Every year, the family would gather around the table and we would all participate. Somebody would be rolling the dough and somebody else would be filling the dumplings. I really missed that when I went gluten-free and it's been years since I've had a good dumpling. No more. First, I'm gonna work on my filling. Growing up, we always ate pork and cabbage dumplings, but ground pork is not so easy to find in North American grocery stores. So instead I'm using about one pound of lean ground turkey. I'm going to add some classic ingredients. First of all, I'm going to add some ginger. Now what I like to do with ginger is to just use the tip of my knife to peel it a little bit. And I've already washed the ginger. The reason you wanna wash your ginger is because it grows in the ground and picks up dirt and dust and little mites that grow on it. So you really wanna make sure you wash it well, especially in between the little joints. Now I'm just gonna take the skins and put it in the compost. Now I'm going to take my ginger and cut it into planks, then little slivers then little cubes. Now my minced ginger goes in with the turkey. Now I'm gonna chop my scallions. These are not the freshest scallions, but that's okay because this is going to get cooked and not presented as a garnish. So first thing is I trim off the roots and compost. Slice them long ways first, then I'm going to arrange them and mince them. This goes in with the turkey now. I've got six large shrimp that I'm going to add as well. I love the taste of shrimp. It really reminds me of Chinese New Year. It just adds such a wonderful, fresh seafood flavor, and they're very special because they're more expensive. So. Today I'm adding shrimp to my turkey dumplings. Now when you pull the tail off, inside the tail is a muscle, and I like to get as much of that meat as possible. So now what I like to do with these large shrimp is I like to give it a little slice down the belly, and then I like to cut that into long strips, and then I cut that into little cubes. I keep these pieces about half a centimeter or a quarter inch in size because I really enjoy getting a whole bite of shrimp. So I don't want them to be too small. Now I'm gonna wash my hands. I've got these dried shiitakes that I soaked in hot water for around 15 minutes to soften them up. First, I'm going to squeeze, drain, and rinse them. Now I'm taking the stems off because they're fibrous and chewy. The reason I like dried shiitakes for this is because they have a very concentrated flavor and because they don't release water as they cook. So if you're going to use fresh shiitakes, I would pay attention to the amount of liquid that they're going to release because too much liquid inside the dumpling will result in the dumpling not holding itself together. Compost. Now I'm going to dice these as well and add them to our filling. Now I'm going to add some seasoning to our filling. First, 
white pepper, a little bit of sesame oil, gluten-free soy sauce. I usually don't add salt at this point because I like to have more salt in my sauces. If you don't plan to use heavy sauces, now is a good time to add salt. Now I'm going to mix the filling. I like to do this with chopsticks because it helps give me a feel for the filling and it doesn't pack the filling tightly. What we're looking for here is a filling that can stick together, that is not going to release too much liquid in the cooking process, but that is also not gonna become dry as we cook it. Now we've got our mixture together and we're ready to set that aside and use it for our dumpling filling. If you wanna test the flavor of your filling and you're not sure if you've given it enough seasoning or salt, what you can do is take a little bit and put it in a saute pan, cook it through and adjust it from there. I welcome you to experiment and find a filling that you enjoy. I'm setting this aside and now we're going to work on our wrappers. First, we're going to mix our dry ingredients. We'll need 200 grams of brown rice flour, 144 grams of white rice flour, plus more for dusting, 100 grams of tapioca starch, six grams of salt, two teaspoons or eight grams of baking powder. Mix it up. Now we're going to mix our wet ingredients. We need 20 grams of any neutral oil. Now we need 260 grams of hot water. Mine is 176 degrees Fahrenheit. I did test this recipe with cold water, but I find that it does not activate the tapioca and the edges of the dumplings were more jagged. So mix that up and then add it to the dough. I like to reserve just a little bit of water because you can always add more water later, but it is hard to remove it. So I'm going to save just a drop at the bottom here. Now I'm gently folding that in. You can see the dough become shaggy. You don't wanna take this all the way to a batter. You just wanna make sure all the clumps can get hydrated. So you might be wondering, why do we wanna add baking powder if we're just going to make the dough with hot water at a temperature that will cause the baking powder to activate? This actually makes a fluffy, lightweight dough that has a very similar puffiness to gluten-full dumpling wrappers, which are small and pillowy and fluffy. Now that we have our crumbles, I'm switching to using my hands to mix. It might look a little shaggy at first, but remember we can always add a little bit more water. You should be able to squeeze it without crumbling. So it looks like we do need just a little bit more water here. Start small. Now you can see that dough coming together. Still think we need more water, so we're gonna add a little bit more. Just gonna pour in the rest of that. All right, now we're starting to get a fluffy dough ball that is picking up all the extra dough around the sides. So that's how you know we're getting close. When you can do this, you're there. Just gonna give you a close up here so you can see the texture of the dough. I like to have wrappers that are around 19 to 20 grams. So this should make around 36. Now I'm going to portion out each wrapper. What I'm doing is weighing each piece. And then once it's the right weight, I'm just gonna squeeze it all together. I find that getting the wrappers to be all around the same size is the trick to having evenly sized dumplings. Now I'm covering these with a wet cloth to prevent them from drying out so that we have plenty of time to work with them. It's time to fill our dumplings. I use a very simple rolling pin. It's like a little dowel. It's nice and lightweight and this is the kind my family used to make dumplings. So why not do the same? First, you're going to dust your surface. I use white rice flour. Now you're going to take a ball of dough, work it between your hands, and what you wanna feel for is a smooth sensation. 
So it will go from having a rough outer surface to feeling very smooth as you squeeze and work it between your hands. So as I'm working it between my hands, I'm also stretching it a little bit. I'm not just rolling it in a ball. I'm really pressing and stretching. You'll end up with a smooth ball that you can press flat. And now you will put it in the middle of your dusted flour and you're going to hold the dough with your non-dominant hand while you roll with your other hand. The ideal dumpling wrapper, according to Chinese people, is one that has thinner edges and a thicker middle. So you'll see that I roll only the outer edges and I leave the center a little bit thicker. I also try not to get too much dusted rice powder in the middle so that we can stick our edges together. I'll show you what this looks like. So I'll do one more just to demonstrate. You take your dough ball, it's craggly to begin with, and you roll it between your hands and really press as you roll it. And then when it feels smooth, press it flat. Then you put it on your dusted surface and very gently spin it as you roll it. If it starts to get sticky, you can collect a little bit more dusting powder. Try not to get too thin here as you're getting started. It's much easier to roll a thicker one than a thinner one. If you go too thin, it'll start sticking to your rolling pin and surface. So one thing to note here is I'm not applying very much pressure at all as I roll. It's almost floating over the dough. This dough does not stretch like it would if it had gluten. So you cannot press hard as you roll around the edges here. Just let it float. Once it starts following the rolling pin, you're on your last couple rolls. Okay, in terms of actually filling the wrapper, I hold the wrapper in my non-dominant hand. Make a crater with the hand that is holding the dough. Arrange your filling in a football shape and then lay that into the dumpling wrapper. Flatten that out with the chopsticks. Now I bring the two edges together, the top and the bottom, and I pinch the top. Then I take it from about two thirds of the way down and I pinch to close there. And then I use my forefinger and thumb to pinch up. Unlike with gluten full wrappers, there is no stretch that's going to happen. So this is a very gentle pinching action. I'm not trying to stretch the wrapper up. All I'm doing is trying to close it. And if you like, you can give an extra little pinch to the edges. Don't worry if they're not perfect when you first get started, they will look better with practice. We're going to steam our dumplings. So I like to fold this kind of dumpling that is going to stand on its own. Now I'm just going to line them up on a tray. For any dumplings you're not going to cook today, line them up on a sheet of wax paper, make sure none of them are touching and put them in the freezer. After a couple hours when they're frozen solid, they can be moved into a bag or a box. I don't have a wok or a big steamer, so what I've got here is my enamel cast iron pan. It's a 10 inch pan, and all I've done is set up a 10 inch bamboo steamer on top. Inside the steamer, I have set up a piece of parchment paper and arranged our dumplings on top. Now that the water is boiling, they're gonna go on top of the enamel cast iron pan with a lid on, and they'll steam for approximately 10 minutes or until the meat reaches a safe cooking temperature. If you were to do this from your frozen dumplings, all you would do is the same exact process. It may take longer for the dumplings to come up to a safe eating temperature, but check the temperature and make sure the meat is done before you eat them. I did try to do this as a pot sticker and it does work. However, I thought that this steamed texture for me was much more nostalgic of the dumplings I grew up eating and actually the texture that I missed the most. So with gluten-free dough, it's relatively easy to get a nice crisp, but it's hard to get a toothy, thin pastry. We're at temp.
I cannot wait to dig in. These look fantastic. They cooked up beautifully. The skins are glowing. Growing up, I ate these with raw garlic and black Chinese vinegar. I'm not gonna do the raw garlic today. And because black Chinese vinegar is not gluten-free, I'm just gonna use balsamic. Now you can use whatever sauce you like for these as long as you enjoy eating them. Wow, okay, here we go. First bite. Wow, this just takes me back to family meals and Chinese New Year. I love that the filling does not slip out as you eat it. You've got a nice feeling on your teeth when you bite into that wrapper. It's not slippery and slimy. And it is such a well-balanced dumpling. There's no dry bits or uneven texture. Now with dumplings, uh, they can be very hot inside. This one was well over the safe temperature. It was 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So you always wanna take a small bite first, let the steam out. You never wanna put the whole thing in your mouth because you might burn yourself with a squirt of hot broth. For more recipes like this, ring the bell, smash the like button, and leave a comment. I'll see you next time. Enjoy.